My my name is Varun Varun Kashimut. I'm a researcher at uh, Technical University of Delft. I've been working on uh, cloud computing and how how is it empowering the businesses over the past uh, one and year one year or so. So there has been a lot of research which has been happening and there has been a lot of changes which I which I for which I went through as I researched this topic. So this is still still a under development research project as such. So this is this is the most present findings which I have. So let me begin the talk. Uh, the structure of the presentation is, is as follows. So we have three main sections here. So one is about the current cloud scenario. What what exactly is the scenario right now, and why why is cloud computing is so much in use, and why it is so important for businesses? And then we come we come to we we, come, we look at some decision making aspects as such. There is a method called a six thinking hacks, which which I'm implementing here. And then finally we we present a cloud decision framework, which which is a kind of Roadmap for businesses to use to analyze to, to reflect and come come at their own conclusions, which is which kind of cloud solution is best for their organization as such. And uh, in between the presentations, there are there are slides there are slides which indicate which go with the heading like CIO takeaway, which which is like a, pre, a, a thing to be worked on. So there is there is content, there is CIO takeaway, and then this is how the presentation goes on. So uh, let's start. Let's get started. So we have the first topic is current cloud scenario. Uh, so right now, cloud cloud computing could be characterized as a, as a disruptive innovation at this point of time. Well, uh, we can get back to that slide later. But the main main idea of a disruptive innovation is that there is a there is an old technology which is called as sustaining technology. So, so we have the conventional way of implementing IT infrastructure, which is which is like the sustaining technology, which is the old old way of doing things. Uh, over a period of time, it happens so that th these sustaining technologies. They innovate along the dimension of perform performance customers have historically value. So there is something, there is an old value which is attain, attached to IT infrastructures, IT infrastructure services and all. So the innovation is all, always along a set of values which are old. And a disruptive innovation, disruptive technology is something which is which comes up with an entirely new set of value. Maybe it can also include some of the old uh, values. A great example for this would be, uh, say, a simple and great example would be metal and plastic. Say, say metal, if you consider metal to be a sustaining technology, and the time when plastic came, plastic was introduced to the market. It was it was a disruptive technology to the metal, all the metals. So so you have uh, there uh, one example is like plastic is. You can you can make a raincoat out of plastic, which can which is foldable. So you you can never have a metal raincoat which which can be folded. So the folding of plastic is something entirely new, which is coming over. Over that is that is what, that is that is causing disruption, and 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 it's lightweight, and it's recyclable, and you can things. The values of these are the new values which plastic brought about, and there was initially. Initially, the metal, the metal could uh, metal metal was used for each and everything, and then slowly, gradually, you saw that metal being displaced by plastic. Right now, we don't even uh, plastic has become so obvious and so ubiquitous in our lives that we don't even realize that this this is something earlier in earlier point of time. This was something you know metals metal were used for these kind of purposes or that kind of idea. And there are so many new new kind of things which are come up with plastic. And cloud computing at this point of time is 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 like 
is like a new thing. It's it's a plastic for I think structure solutions, and it is gradually gradually displacing the older ways of older ID infrastructures. So what what are the new values we get from cloud computing? That is that is one one of the questions which we have. So the, this is a fact which I just repeated. Over the over, the, over time, these disruptors eat into the market of established players. So. So you have you have products and services which are cheaper, faster, and easier to use when when it comes to disruptive innovation. So the the question uh, here I present that example of plastic and metal. So the, uh, plastic being a disruptive innovation for metal. So so if, if another another example would be TV and DVDs are are a disruptive innovation for movie movie theaters. So here you can see that there's an entire uh, set of values. There's a, there's a business model as well as as well as an innovation, technological innovation. Together, they they leverage the disruptive innovation. So TV and DVD have a different different business model compared to movie theaters altogether. So even then, so this business model together with the innovation is, is having is giving. The new value of anytime access, say you can replay, pause. I'm just mentioning very, very basic, very few examples. So, so when you think of cloud computing, so you know people know that cloud computing is new. It's it's something it is disrupting something. But the the main problem which I which I sensed when I had interviews with the, with people over here and all was that what are the technologies which are being displaced, which are being disrupted, and how. What exactly is the nature of this disruption? This is something is not so clear yet. It because it's 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 uh, it's at the stage of inception, right? So when you see at plastic and metal, you're you're pretty obvious. You you know that what kind of things plastic can do and metal can't do. Cloud computing, when you take the the technology itself is is in is in a evolution phase. Even though there are a lot have been lot of evolution has happened. So still, it, it's an open box. This is something which needs to be evaluated in the context of the organization, in the concept of the business, in the concept of the CIO's perspective of what requires to be done, and then you get the new values. These are the, these are the general new values which I mentioned over here. One is uh, that when you cloud computing is about service model. So as I'm not going into a definition because the definition of cloud computing over here that it's about because you have a lot of presentation about that, and so it's about services over here. So, so one major characteristic is that capital expenditure is converted into an operation, operational expenditure. So you don't have this this in terms of economic uh, uh, viewpoint. This this implies that there are zero sunk costs. So, so you don't have anything. Um, the organization does not have anything invested in the in the form of Assets, so it's it's just pay on pay on use. So you just subscribe to it, and you have it. So it's it's something like like your mobile sub, uh, mobile telephone subscription. So you don't own the own the infrastructure anyway right now. So another another great new value which is coming out is uh, the time to market for 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 a startup or for some some or even a big bigger business if they want to introduce some some new product or service which which relies on their IT infrastructure to market. Earlier earlier phases, earlier point of view was that you have to plan for IT infrastructure, you have to uh, roll that out, you have to invest, and then, then you're able to introduce into the market. Now, right now, that planning phase and investment in IT infrastructure is, is greatly reduced. Companies are more, more open to in experiment because of the flexibility the uh, cloud computing offers them. And introduce new, new products into the market within with very less time span. Another great aspect is about elasticity. This this as this of course is an is bit uh, idealistic view and and one of the most key characteristic key characteristics of cloud computing. By elasticity we mean that you can scale in and scale down with these. You can you can hire you can increase the number of CPUs being hired, rented, and you can also reduce them. So, 
and one great character uh, one great feature of this is that um it becomes imperative so if you if you hire if you hire say 10 cpus for 100 hours that is as good as hiring 100 cpus for 10 hours 10 cpus for 100 hours and 100 cpus for 10 hours so you know this 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 is the this is exactly what is being built what is being uh, offered in cloud computing this property so 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 you, you can either have, have 100 cpus for 10 hours and get that job done in a very less time or you can ha you can take 10 cpus and work it over 100 100 hours time period so you can see the reduction in time with the increase in computing power for the same price this this is like a very brand new value which is which cloud computing is offering right now and of course simplicity this is this is not so uh, this is a promised ideal right now uh, that you can just there is no maintenance depending on the kind of cloud computing service you adopt so there is no maintenance or maintenance uh, charges maintenance uh, worries to the organization anymore so but the, there is but there are some issues with SLAs and things like that which are which are still there but compared to the older older paradigm so there is a lot of simplicity being offered right now so this is one of the CIO takeaways so uh, from what I, what have been discussed so far so CIOs need to reflect back saying that what are the components in my organization's IT infrastructure that is expensive underused and for which cheaper functional alternatives are available in cloud computing that meet our of course demands and constraints so these these characteristics expensive underused these are these are the typical nature of sustaining in innovations so anything which is uh, which is being innovated for a longer period of time and and it has it has outgrown its value that tends to get into expensive underused so one of the examples would be say say microsoft word so microsoft word desktop application has so many features out of which maybe maybe you may not be using all of them maybe you, you may be using only two of the features you you, you just have a uh, simple plain text to be typed and sent over you don't need any uh, fancy say diagrams or uh, uh, clip art or any any of the any of the higher features so when you look at google docs google docs which is a web based service is a, is a cloud cloud alternative so so you see so so if you have if your organization is say using or uh, this is just one example so so you you might have other various examples so this again depends on the kind of uh, level of infrastructure where we are looking at either at platform level infrastructure level or or at the SaaS level so that again so you have to analyze this for every level, SaaS level, fast level, and IS level. So, so what is expensive? What is underused? And what is something which which can be, which is cheaper and which is, which serves my function? So you make a list of those things, and then we can work. Or that could that could be used to arrive at it better. So the question is, what is being disrupted in my IT infrastructure? This is this is a focal point for this. Okay, so after this, we have coming into this a bit bit of a visionary information only. So I was thinking I, I did a lot of research on on understanding the pattern of evolution. So how how is this cloud players how this service products are evolving over a period of time? So, so one of the thoughts when I was just pondering over this was I just saw an saw an airplane and I saw clouds. So it was just airline industry is also something which is working in in the cloud so uh, i just started thinking about the evolution of airline industry so how they are like you have lufthansa you have um, you have uh, air france you have singapore airlines so I say so many providers airline industries and but even now but but when you think of a journey when you when you think of making a journey you don't think in terms of uh, primarily in terms of the airways of course it, it could be a priority but but your primary uh, focus would be from destination 
A to destination B. You, you are focused on reaching from, say, destination A to destination B. And there could be a number of uh, collaboration between the vendors. So you could you could fly from Air France to Air France and then then catch catch a British Airways flight to reach, or you could you, you could use other combination. It depends on the kind of your your own priorities, your own uh, agenda, time schedule constraints, and things like that. So so right now well, I could I, I thought of modeling, and this is this is where and the, all of this is possible. Because all of airline industry is, is able to operate in such a way because because they are standardized they have they have a way to there are standards which are there which which come up say if you if you check in your luggage with a British Airways you don't you don't need to take care of checking it into another Airways so it, it it's it's covered it's it's automatic with the cloud cloud computing this this standardization is is something which is evolving right. But this is some. This is this is the model where they would get into, obviously. So you would have different players, Google and uh, Google, Microsoft. All of them are like all of them are like different different carriers. Instead of carrying the passenger, they they're carrying your information, your uh, data over here. So, but but the point is, they have to serve the journey you are making, your journey you are making from at this point of time. Altogether, so if so, and one of the one of the quotes which I got was uh, one of the criteria for getting into a cloud is you have to think about how how easy it is for me to get out of the cloud. It's it's the cloud service service providers always advertise in terms of this is good, that is good, and you know it's my product has these features and these kind of things. But it's also important to get out of the cloud as easily as you can get inside. So this is what I this is why I'm I'm trying to use a airline industry model. So so you you get into one airline, it's 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 effortless for you to move into another airlines. You can uh, because the collaboration is established at that level. And even though this evolution is happening, some of the service providers are lagging behind. Some of them are going towards this direction. And so if you if your organization follows in this direction, so how easily can I move out of the cloud? Is a question, not how easily can I get into the cloud? Because vendor lock-in is 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 going to be a big problem. So if you get into the cloud and suppose you 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 can't reverse that back, that causes that would have huge implications to the organization. So thinking of evaluating the cloud solution from how easily can I get out of this also, how much or can I move into different service providers? So this this is a this is a simple. Uh, comparison. So you have you have your information of your organization or your services and everything. This this is something very similar to a passenger or your your flight or in any airline. Cloud vendor is some someone who's going to be like like an company. And cloud usage is is like an agent. So this this is also a service model over here. So your a cloud contracts or SLA should be like would be going to be like an A ticket. So from this point to this point, so you have you have your SLS defined and clear. So these are the terms in which uh, the way to assess a cloud solution. So so further extracting on that. So this is again a CR takeaway number two. So which cloud solution is closest to the simplicity of a journey in airlines? So even though this seems very uh, abstract and very vague, but if you if you look at the values. So from the airline we have interoperability. So the different airlines are interoperated, and then there is no switching costs or time involved. What is the switching cost from from say moving from one airline to another? So level of cooperation or standardization with CSPs. This is this is one of the main criteria which which we which it all boils boils down to. And then we have no vendor lock-in. So there, this is what I was testing about. How easy. How easy it is to move out of this cloud solution, and then integration. Are there extra time costs involved with the integration of on-premise apps? So uh, this this is something which I'm telling. Uh, the on-premise applications would be those which which you want to have, uh, which you don't want to move to the cloud. This is like, say, suppose there are some applications which you want to have 
where which which will be running on your IT infrastructure locally. But you you also want to use some services to the cloud. So you want you want an integration between the cloud and and your local services. So this is also a possible scenario, and this is called a hybrid solution, which is which is being uh, marketed as as to the preferred way. So sometimes organizations think in terms of you know black or white. So they don't think in terms of gray. So either you move to the cloud or you don't move to the cloud. So, but it could be also in between. You could you could also move. You could you could be great. You could you could stay. You could use some of the services locally, and you could also have something on the cloud, which integrates in a beautiful way. It's also possible to design and come up with a solution like that. So this is about integration. How how is it? How can it inter integrate with it, and are there any extra time and cost involved? So this is something which is which goes unnoticed many times. When whenever uh, a cloud service provider or a consultant comes up with with a solution, so th this is something which they hesitate to or they, uh, are not looked into, probed into deeply. So uh, this is one caveat over here, and risk transference. So th this is one of the how are the SLA terms for outages or disaster defined? How is risk managed? So this this is one question which needs to be addressed. So even though cloud promises say that you know we are taking your risk, we are take, we are going to manage your infrastructure, we are going to provide you these services, no. So but what if it fails? What is what is the what are the disaster uh, recovery steps you have? Can you can you have a solution worked out where you can fall back onto 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 your local old way of doing things, or or you can, can you have an uh, Alternate arrangement where you have another service provider who's going to provide you some backup way is, is something which which could needs to be addressed for every CIO needs to address. So, um, looking, uh, there's a sample survey of cloud ROI over here. So this is this is actually from. So you have. I I hope you can see the words over here. Are the words over here? So you can look at capex being there and opex being involved, and on premises on premises would refer to local IT infrastructure. Cloud based is some, something which you have uh, on cloud. So, so clearly there is. I mean, uh, you look at capex in cloud in cloud based. When you come to uh, cloud based, capital expenditure is like is is, is just paused off. It, it it's it's reduced drastically. So there's, there's there's no absolutely no comparison over here. So when you look at operation expenditure, even with the cloud, it's 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 even lesser than what would you have for the capital with with an on-premise infrastructure. So you can see there is huge savings indicated. There. So so uh, excluding the migration cost, it releases about 90% of capex. Investments and reduces opex cost by 50% every year. So this is like this is like a huge. This is a sample taken from Infosys blogs. So clearly there is financial advantage when you move, but 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 with the cloud and with the discussion which which we had so far, there is a new kind of value which is also coming, which was which is about the freedom, freedom of moving from one. One vendor to other vendor, having zero zero sum cost would give you to would have you would have you uh, easier way to launch your product and all. So, so one one way of modeling this is like like businesses are like say honeybees and and they are go going to cloud service providers. To get their service, so so the honeybee is not not locked in by the flower, so that you know you 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 need to stay here and collect nectar from this particular flower. The honeybee is free to free to choose what can whatever kind of flower it requires, and depending on kind of nectar it desires. In the in the in the process, it is also helping the CSP evolve also. But but the freedom offered by CSP to the client to the to the honeybee is, is something. Entirely new value, which which is arising in the cloud paradigm. This is something which you can't think in terms of on-premise. On-premise is something like honeybee locked to a flower, so you the honeybee can't can't you know move away from the flower. 
right now with the cloud there is so much of freedom being there that you you uh, the it infrastructure is more volatile it's it's not you can move from one one service provider to another so this this freedom needs to be taken into account and there, there is no monetary way to assess this so so we have uh, here i am comparing capex with opex and these are numerical figures and these certainly indicate savings but what does this kind of freedom mean for your organization? What does not being locked on by ID infrastructure mean to your organization? Is something something personal, something something personal to that particular organization? It may be it may be different. Sometimes maybe this freedom may not be so good, or sometimes it may be it may enable you to launch new services, products, or change your organization structure, the way of working in a, in, a, in an easier way. So this is something which needs to be taken into account, and I'm trying to more, make it more quantitative. And then, uh, how can I assess this freedom from zero sum costs? What is this freedom from zero sum costs enable to make enables to, enables business? This is something which I'm doing research over right now. So yeah, this is the point which uh, yeah, take over CEO take away number three. So so what what does freedom of zero sum costs for IT infrastructure imply for your organization? This needs to be probed into deeper and taken into account. So let's get back. To, uh, we're, we're getting into a decision tool. So first, I'll be presenting a technique called as uh, six thinking hats. This is actually a way to assess, but way to assess. And this is based. Uh, this is be given by uh, Edward D. Bono. Edward D. Bono is a psychologist and. And it is his approach to uh, make arrive at decisions, considering a lot of complexities and things like that, which which decision makers face in this in this current scenario. So before before getting into that, let's see why why cloud decisions get cloudy. Why why is this so confusing for say if you want to if you want to uh, assess a cloud solution? Why do you why is there so there are so many options and so many things? And so many uh, factors which are not so clear. So, one of the key factors is not organizations sometimes don't turn fully inward to know, uh, to know and bring an absolute clarity of organizational needs and constraints. Even though this is this seems something uh, very uh, common sense or something very obvious, but this is one of the problems. Organizations actually need to uh, understand their business. First, their their constraints, their strategy, their goals, having that absolutely clear, crystal clear, and then looking out for cloud solutions. Then looking out for wh how can how what kind of cloud solution is going to fit my needs. Uh, instead, if you start looking like oh, there are so many cloud solutions outside, let me see if if this uh, Amazon Web Services is going to maybe help my business. That's not going to serve you anything. That creates Cloudiness that that creates a, a lot more confusion. These are my goals. These are my constraints. These are my business uh, things. Now let me look at cloud solutions. What are what are available? So, so this is this is what is um, way of putting it over here. And also, uh, caveat is about promises versus reality. How a lot of cloud services pr promise a lot, but how does it translate into reality for my particular business? Is is what in organization context. So is, is something which needs to be assessed over here. So to help through to to analyze these kind of things, to analyze these kind of things. So I am presenting this. Uh, Thing called as six thinking hats. It's very, uh, it's 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 actually a psychological way and psychological way. And the only way uh, simplicity of this technique is that you choose to focus on one particular aspect when when you are collecting data or when when you are trying to decide. Instead of being uh, confused from uh, six seven factors, weighing them, comparing them, and assessing all of them together, you choose say let me focus on only one particular aspect. And then go to other factor, and then when you have all of them, so six six hats are like six different aspects. 
So you have the white hat, calls for information known or naked, the facts, just the facts. Yellow hat symbolizes, uh, symbolizes brightness and optimism. So you just think of, you just think of optimism under this when you're having it. The, the way, way to use this is, is, is like as if you, you imagine that you're wearing, wearing this particular hat, you're, you're wearing a white hat and then only co focusing on information known or needed. So you're, you're just collecting facts. You're not going into hype. You're not going to uh, hype. What does Gartner say? That what what is going to cloud? Com what will be the cloud computing be like uh, in 2015? No, you're not going to focus on that information when you're thinking on when when you're thinking with with a white hat on. You're thinking about what is what is the reality right now. So so suppose say there is some uh, organization which has saved uh, so much of uh, so much of expenditure by using cloud services. That is a fact. Which which will come under white hat thinking. When you but when you go for yellow hat thinking, you you are bright and optimistic. Under this, you explore all the positives, all the promises, and things like that. So now now you think you you think about the roadmap. You think about what what can be things like if I go with this kind of solution, with this kind of approach, five years down the line, six years down the line. So so it's about optimistic optimism, and you're looking about looking ahead. But you're not you're again completely ignoring all the uh, other other factors which come into it. So when when you go for black hat, you're you're being very judgmental. You know, it's it's like playing the devil's advocate. Why something may not work, or what what exactly are the dangers? Suppose I move into the cloud. So so suppose and and the cloud service provider is going to fail, or uh, there be there would be uh, there be a massive failure, a massive failure, and I lose all of my data. What would what would that happen? Then happen. So this is the kind of thinking black hat brings, and red hat is about uh, intuitions and feelings and hunches. So this is something which is never used in corporate decision making, but this, these sometimes actually shape most important decisions. Sometimes it's it's pure intuition. Sometimes you just know that you know well, this is going to happen or this this is happening, just like uh, what is happening now with with the cloud center. So, so at this point, you, you assess them with, uh, with your intuition. The green hat, green hat is about creativity and possibilities, alternatives, and new ideas. So green hat is about being alternative. So suppose uh, if you choose a cloud solution, and then then you're having a green hat thinking, you you think about other ways, other ways it can it can be leveraged to to the organization, or there may be other other possibilities instead of other possibilities to use. So the blue hat is about uh, it's just a master control process. So you, you just you just it's it's a way to use it. You could find find more about this by, just by googling over here or googling over this name. This is as obvious as that. So, so how how I particularly want to use this this technique with with what I'm presenting right now is that you know uh, the CIO takeaway responses which I, which I which I had which I presented in previous slide number one number two number three. So you try to answer those questions using the six hands. So you'd have actually the six answers for every takeaway. So in a way, like you'd have six. Three, uh, I mean, you'd have five answers. What is being disrupted in my team strategy? You answer these questions, wearing each of these caps. And when you're wearing the white hat, you're you're not thinking about the aspects about your life. That's that's the key, totally key to you. So, so you come up with answers over here, depending on the characteristics and everything. So, so this is this is something a personal and something which needs to be worked on in a business context. So finally, uh, we get to the framework which is being drawn based on uh, all of these factors which I mentioned so far. So this, this is being made. Uh, all of this framework has been designed based on information from surveys, interviews of CIOs, uh, research works, and points presented till now. So the goal of this framework is not to not to provide some uh, easy way or some uh, instant solution. That, that's that's not clearly not the goal of uh, the framework. It's 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 a 
it's a, it's more of a tool to uh, get deeper to connect deeper with the organization needs and and try to correlate them with with the IT infrastructure how does my business school how does my strategy uh, match match up with with the IT infrastructure I have right now is is the focus of this table that is something has to be discovered by by the CIO or or the organization involved and that is something different for every organization so you don't have any uh, a ready made solution over here and and it will be different for every organization that is that is what that need that trust needs to come that you know this is this is my analysis this is my uh, situation my organization this is the kind of solution this is the kind of cloud solution that best fit my kind of uh, organization need constraints and vision so that that is once that uh, knowingness, once that uh, feeling of confidence comes up, then it would be easier. Then the things would, the decision things and other things would fall into place. So the framework is meant to uh, meant to bring that kind of knowingness. So uh, these are just ways over here. So so one. So number one factor is about being absolutely clear about organization needs, constraints, and visions. So what what are my uh, computing needs? What are my computing needs at three levels? SaaS, PaaS, and uh, IaaS. What are what are the needs? Which of these uh, needs are so that you know I need infrastructure on premise? Which of these can be moved to the cloud? That. There are some constraints. There are some organizations where, suppose it's a banking organization, there's a high, high, a high need of security. So, so, so they they can't think of going going, going to the cloud for saving their customers' data. Or that. They need high security. So that that's a constraint for a bank. But but suppose suppose you you are a, you are a business selling selling say clothes or, or a merchandise exporter or some, something like that. You, then your data is not so not so prone to security in compared to bank. So this constant organization need and constant is inherently different for every kind of business. So first you need to start with that. Okay. So what are the what are the factors? What are the needs, constraints, and then we come to the CIO takeaway. So the the takeaways which I mentioned over here. So we just mentioned all all of the takeaways, and those takeaways need to be answered with with the thinking hats, six thinking hats way of answering them. So how how does this work for my organization with this perspective, with that, with green hat thinking, with white hat thinking? That is something the second step, which which would be the work. And then asking some hard questions like is is cloud really required? I mean, I mean being being uh, or can can there be other other solutions? Can virtualization or web hosting be done? Is there is there private private? Uh, do I require private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud? I suppose or SaaS or combination or combination of these two best fits with best fits with my organization. Compatibility of SLA with with my organization. This this is this this area is something again which is creating a lot of confusions because you know many people ignore the one ignore the organization need and constraint and directly try to analyze the SLA and uh, the combination whatever is, whatever is being offered in the market so this this needs to be analyzed with this uh, context the big context. So the number four, number four is about uh, impact priority of below factors on business, time to market. So these are, these are the new values which cloud brings. This is, this is what is the deception mainly about. So time to market, elasticity, transference of risk, capital expenditure of risk. What does these impact? How does these impact my business? Because these are the things which 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 are going to shape up. Just like you know, uh, I was talking about plastic. The, the quality of plastic 
that it is very light and it can be shaped into uh, very easy to shape into other other forms. Actually, explore it. When 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 plastic was first introduced, it was it was used for only only few kind of applications. Say basic wherever metal was used, it was used only for those kind of things. But later on, these new values of plastic opened an entire new market, entire new application. To the extent that right now you can't even think of them, you can't even think of them. So, so time to market, elasticity and transparent of this capex to opex are, are are the new values which which will be which will have tremendous impact. There is no absolutely no doubt about that. So if a competitor knows how to uh, leverage on these values, he's going to he's going to beat beat your business way back. That it's it's as simple as that. Okay. So, so, but you need to consider what does it mean to my business? So time to market, what does it mean to reduction of time to market? What does it mean to my business? How can I leverage on that? How can I use elasticity factor? One of the uh, examples for elasticity is when there was uh, when there was an election campaign and Hillary, uh, Hillary Clinton ne needed to uh, communicate, communicate her message. Her, her campaign message was was on the website, and there were there were there was such a peak uh, peak traffic that you needed to hire hire a cloud computing service provider. So so even though even though they did not have election is a one time one season thing. You don't election is not something like you know uh, which is going on all the time. So this is one time thing election. So at that time at that time it, it does not make sense to buy buy say hundreds of computers or hundreds of uh, in installation servers so, so instead of that they they hire the servers and on the day when the election is closer there, there is more demand on those infrastructure on the day election is there there is no more demand so so and but when the election is over there is no no more demand so you you can release the uh, servers you can release this uh, cpus depending on the demand so what are the areas in your business which are seasonal? Say, suppose uh, suppose there are there is uh, there is a Christmas time business associated with Christmas. So during Christmas time, there might be there might be huge huge hits on your site or huge hits on your uh, on on your organization. So say cloud computing can serve serve you during that time, or or there may be some other some other thing which is very inherent, very typical of your business. So this is what I mean by assessing the elasticity in in terms of your uh, context so how can i use uh, cloud so solutions to to those kind of uh, traits of my business that is that is something which which needs to be assessed over there. so after this we come to extent of uh, substitution of uh, in incumbent technology so how much how much of uh, incumbent incumbent is about the old technology, increment by increment, I mean old. So metal would be an increment technology, and plastic would be a disruptive technology. So right now, right now, whatever whatever you, uh, your organization is using, the IT infrastructure, that that is actually an increment technology. So how much the cloud computing solution is able to substitute that, and what are the new values that that has that is coming? So both both needs to be considered. You need it's not not only about new factors it's also about substitution about substitution of old needs and old uh old uh, constraints you have so so these two needs to be balanced so if if you if you try to just go for a cloud solution uh, thinking that this is going to serve my older needs that will that will be a partial way of looking at it you are not going to leverage 100% from that cloud computing solution but if if you at the same time if you just look at what are the new values that are coming into coming into my business that is going to uh, by using this cloud computing and not thinking about how effectively that is substituting my uh, older way then again you're going to miss out so the, the, this is a, a very delicate balance over here which needs to be assessed and assessed and thoroughly assessed in fact thoroughly assessed and not not getting uh, carried away by the new values and not getting not getting too attached to these so th this is something uh, a reorganization reshaping of of the organization happens 
from adjusting to these two things. So when these two are bal are in balance, this would give rise to a greater um, new possibilities, new possibilities for them over, over there. So, so when you evaluate all of these, finally you arrive at, at what what cloud solution is best for your organization, and then you and then you go for testing testing it over there. So you reevaluate that, reevaluate that. Say uh, hiring it for for a loop, for for a limited period of time. Say you go for, you go for a service provider X or service provider Y, and then you reevaluate all of these factors again. But once you have hired him, all of these factors again. So if 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 it does not fit, or if there's some something else which which comes up, then again, this process is like. It's a, a cyclical process, so you reevaluate and you come up, come up constantly. You come up with a combination. Of things. One of the key factors is, is that you can combine different service providers. So uh, you could be using, say, uh, Amazon Web Services for your IaaS, and then 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 go for Google for uh, Google for your PaaS PaaS needs, and then go for Salesforce for SaaS needs, or or even very niche. Niche applications. It 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 may, it may not be one service provider is going to meet all of your needs. It, it's not is is a very uh, utopian or very idealistic view, and that's not going to work out. One of the beauties of cloud computing is about is 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 about uh, being able to combine all of these different service providers and leveraging their their niche their capacity to your business. And if something does not serve your business, you you let go of that and choose some other some other service provider which which is more of more of in tune with with your business uh apart from these there are there are like there are or there are also open source projects there's one project called as openstack which is being which is about which is which is, which tells about this entire open approach to building your cloud solution it's an open source service product by rackspace but it's typically uh, from your gr from ground up, you build your cloud. So from your from IaaS level to SaaS, you have customization. You have it's a hybrid cloud over there. So you you have customization to build it from from the ground up. So yeah, I mean uh, this is this is basically my uh, my presentation over here, and I hope this this helps. And if there's uh, any questions, I think I can I can take them in the Q and A section over here. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, participating. It's really great to connect, and it, it's a cloud sign is really great. Thank, thank you for the cloud sign for hosting this. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, we can take that now. This is my um, Twitter account and my trackpad blog over here. If there's, if you, if you feel like getting in touch. Please do feel free to do that. And this is this is current research, so I'm I'm going to publish publish the final research and making it more quantitative and more uh, more uh, applicable for businesses. Taking this approach, even though it's more abstract at this point of time, I'm going to make it more specific to and I'll be publishing it on my website and get updating it on Twitter. So thank you, thank you very much.